Tornadoes. Over a thousand happen annually in the United States, and hundreds more happen globally. Of those, only a handful of those will have a notable impact. Even fewer are showcased in the media, and only a few of those go on to have a constant presence online and in the media. Some become iconic, if you will. Any major tornado is a newsworthy event, but some truly horrific storms linger in the public consciousness. The most powerful storms remain known long after they dissipate. So in this video, we'll dive into some very iconic tornadoes, and it may be iconic for several reasons. For example, the rating, the size, strength, death count, location, etc. But anyways, let's begin by getting this one out of the way. Some tornadoes become iconic because of how long their track was, others from the death count, and some because of their strength. The March 18th, 1925 Tri-State Tornado had all three of these characteristics, as it was incredibly violent as it was an F5 tornado that tracked 215 miles through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, unfortunately killing 695 people and injuring over 2,000. Just looking at the stats from this tornado, or a potential tornado family, it's not hard to see why this tornado is so incredibly iconic. This tornado stands at the top for many American tornado stats, such as death count and distance traveled, for example. Because of the time period it occurred in, no footage or photos exist of the actual tornado. But if this tornado would have occurred in the 21st century, the amount of photos and videos of the tornado would have easily made this thing the most iconic tornado of all time. But this next tornado is similar to the century, as it's also a powerful F5 tornado, the strongest tornado ever recorded. On May 3rd, 1999, a tornado tore through Bridge Creek outside of Oklahoma City before moving into Moore and the OKC Metro. The twister caused more than $1 billion in damage, and during its 85 minutes on the ground, it struck a portable Doppler weather station. The ammonometer recorded a wind gust of over 300 miles per hour as the funnel passed over, marking the highest wind speed ever officially recorded in a tornado. Over its 85-minute life, those winds would create some of the most horrific tornado damage ever seen, unfortunately resulting in 36 people losing their lives. This tornado would not only go down in infamy just for its wind speed, but also for its location, as 14 years later, another iconic EF5 tornado would cause extreme damage in Moore and in the OKC Metro, as it would cross the Moore 1999 tornado's path. The Moore 1999 and 2013 tornadoes were both relatively photogenic, yet at the same time absolutely horrifying, with both having some very iconic photos and videos. The 1999 Bridge Creek tornado was a part of a large outbreak of 79 tornadoes. This next entry is several tornadoes that would all become engraved in American history, and they all would occur on the same day. April 27, 2011 is a day that will be engraved in meteorological history forever. It was the third day in a late April outbreak, which would start on the 25th and end on the 28th. Over the four days, 360 tornadoes would touch down, 216 of which on the 27th alone. At 3.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time on April 27, 2011, a tornado would touch down in Marion County, Alabama, and would go on to track 132 miles across Alabama and Mississippi, being on the ground for 2 hours and 35 minutes. This tornado would strike Hackleburg, Phil Campbell, and other small towns across the two states at EF5 intensity, with extreme winds estimated to be reaching 210 miles per hour. These winds were strong enough to wipe well-constructed homes off the face of the earth, leaving bare slabs, and strong enough to peel the asphalt off a road. The Hackleburg tornado, as it is referred to as, was totally rain-wrapped, and this photo of the massive rain-wrapped monster is a picture that makes you just uneasy looking at it. But that's not the only iconic or violent tornado from that day. Shortly after, the Smithville tornado would touch down, best known for its incredible damage. The Philadelphia EF5 earlier that day is known for its unreal ground scouring, but probably the most iconic tornado from the day and outbreak would be the Tuscaloosa-Birmingham EF4 that would, as its name implies, rip right through the heart of Tuscaloosa at high-end EF4 intensity before moving on to strike the northern tip of Birmingham at low-end EF4 intensity. The iconic image of the multi-vortex wedge ripping through Tuscaloosa on the tower camera is as scary as anything. Less than a month later, an even more deadly, destructive, and iconic event would unfold. On May 22, 2011, an EF-5 multi-vortex monster would rip directly through the heart of Joplin, leaving a visible satellite scar to this day, 
Between the 21st to the 26th, one of the biggest tornado outbreaks ever would develop consisting of 241 tornadoes, which affected the Midwestern and Southern regions of the United States. Two of those 241 tornadoes would be rated EF5. A tornado near Al Reno, Oklahoma, which would destroy many homes with estimated wind speeds of 295 miles per hour. And the other EF5? A rain-wrapped multi-vortex wedge that would obliterate Joplin, Missouri causing over $2.8 billion in damages and also causing 158 deaths with an additional eight indirect deaths. The Joplin tornado, more specifically this photo, are massive in the current weather community and in media. 2011 as a whole is easily the most remembered tornado year and it's not hard to see why just from the past two entries. As previously mentioned, an incredibly powerful tornado with winds of 295 miles per hour would touch down and strike areas near El Reno, Oklahoma during this outbreak. This next tornado was in the same spot, just a little more than two years later, but it was even stronger. May 31st, 2013, the worst day in the history of storm chasing. During the early evening of Friday, May 31st, 2013, a very large and powerful tornado occurred over rural areas of central Oklahoma. This rain-wrapped, multiple-vortex tornado was the widest tornado ever recorded and was part of a larger weather system that produced dozens of tornadoes over the preceding days. Its incredible size, fast speed, rain-wrapped appearance, and incredible power made this tornado incredibly dangerous, as it would go on to kill four storm chasers. This tornado featured winds over 300 miles per hour, and thankfully, it hit no major buildings with its peak winds, only creating EF3 damage, sparking some controversy over its rating. The El Reno tornado being the widest tornado ever, one of the most powerful ever, the only tornado to kill storm chasers, and its rating controversy, make this tornado, in my opinion, the most iconic tornado of all time. Not to mention the countless videos, photos, alongside documentaries and breakdowns of this event. The last tornado isn't notable or iconic at all. It's what happened with it and the effects that it had that require a mention in this video. From the 26th to the 27th of April 1991, multiple supercells across Oklahoma and Kansas led to a regional tornado outbreak. A total of 55 tornadoes were confirmed, many of which were strong, F2 or greater on the Fujita scale. After the Andover F5 lifted, the parent supercell continued northeast and produced another strong tornado. This tornado, rated F2, tracked for 21 miles in rural Kansas. This tornado would change tornado safety forever, as it would spark one of the most influential, famous, and dangerous tornado myths ever, as a Kansas television crew sought shelter underneath an overpass on the Kansas Turnpike as the tornado was approaching. Video from the crew shows a minivan several hundred yards down the road being rolled multiple times, with other vehicles such as large semi-trailer trucks overturned and severely damaged as well. Alongside the 1979 Wichita Falls F4 tornado, this marked the second prominent example of people seeking refuge from a tornado underneath an overpass and it benefiting them. Information from the National Weather Service initially and indirectly contributed to this line of thought as well at the time. During the previously mentioned 1999 Oklahoma tornado outbreak, the consequences of this practice were realized. On May 3, 1999, there were three locations where a highway overpass was utilized as a shelter from approaching tornadoes, and at all three locations there was at least one fatality. One of these, the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado, was a violent F4 to F5 intensity as it impacted the overpass. One incorrect notion from the Kansas Turnpike video was that the film crew was protected by the weaker nature of the tornado as it passed over primarily rural area, in contrast to the Bridge Creek Moor tornado. However, another F2 on May 3, 1999 killed one individual, providing that tornadoes of any intensity are capable of killing people harboring under overpasses. In addition to the fatalities, many people who survived these tornadoes nonetheless suffered graphic injuries and sometimes permanent disabilities. Because of this, we now know how dangerous seeking shelter under an overpass is in case of a tornado, and that is why this event deserves a mention. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. This video, as all my others, take a very long time to create, so if you could like and subscribe, it would mean a lot. If you think some other tornadoes not named the 1997 Gerald Tornado should have been featured, then comment them down below, and if you want a part 2, then be sure to let me know. Also, if you'd like to see the opposite of this, and see a video consisting of unknown deadly tornadoes, then also do let me know. Anyways, have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye.